Here we are, we're talking about Matilda, one of my favorite movies. Was so I had such a great time making a movie. See, I even have some props from the movie. This was the, the glue pot that stuck my hat on in the movie. It's great. We just remastered it for Blu-ray. And we're just about to do a tea party right now with the Trunchbull, Pam Ferris, Mara Wilson, Rhea Perlman, all the people that the, the kids grown up. Well, wait a minute. I'm the same. Rhea is the same, a little bit older. Pam is the same, but the kids are totally different. It's like wacky. I showed them the movie. I showed them the movie. It was like just, I, I was emotional going up and, and saying hello to them because it's like, they were all like grown up and beautiful at 25 and six. And you're gonna have a great time. Stick around for the party. Listen, you little wiseacre. I'm smart, you're dumb. I'm big, you're little. I'm right, you're wrong. And there's nothing you can do about it. Yeah, you got yeah, the dregs. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you got the dregs. I got the dregs. I won! I hit the double thing go! Ah! Where, Harry? Right down here. <laughs> right down there. Right down there. Uh -huh. Right, and one more. Right there, uh -huh. They're all mistakes, children. Filthy, nasty things. Glad I never was one. You should have won it today. <laughs> I ha where? <laughs> a dip face. Have a carrot. I was the brother. I was the brother. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Infinite telling. Best friends don't tell. Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> OK, first things first, we yeah. come over here. Miss Honey taught us how to spell a long word yesterday. We can spell difficulty. You don't have pigtails anymore, no. which we found out. <laughs> Traumatized, never again. Never again, not after that. I don't want any, thank you. <laughs> Sign your real name, not Bruce Bobtrot. Okay, listen up, everybody. We have a new student with us today. This is Matilda Wormwood. Oh my oh. God. You look exactly <laughs> so do you. I remember the first time we heard about Matilda about the book. Right. And I think it was our kids were just graduating into like reading pick, uh, chapter, chapter books. Chapter books, right. Right? Before we started making the movie, before we even got anywhere, I would tell people <laughs> that it's something that I wanted to do. Are you being smart with me? If you're being smart with me, young lady, you're gonna be punished. Punished for being smart? Do you remember the first time when you thought about playing the part? You know, I just thought Mrs. Wormwood was probably the one I might get cast in if I knew the director. Is it um, weird that you, your name is Zinnia? It is weird. Right. Because it's a flower, right? Yes. It's a delicate Isn't it? Isn't it a It's a delicate a flower? flower. Yeah. yeah. Well, she's a little delicate. Yeah, a little delicate in the, <laughs> in the, in the brain. Yeah. Well, yeah. Miss Snit. A girl does not get anywhere by acting intelligent. I mean, take a look at you and me. You chose books. I chose looks. I have a nice house, a wonderful husband, and you were slaving away teaching snot-nosed children their ABCs. We got really lucky finding Mara. When she walked in, boy, <sighs> man. It was pretty instant, I yeah, think. Yeah, I remember you telling me how much yeah, yeah. she walked in the door. Yeah, after after you see that many people also, it's a, it's a comparative. It's like even when you have an open call and people people come, you can you sort of you can spot them, you know? So after seeing hundreds and hundreds of kids, somebody like Mara walks in, and there is that moment where you think you have the perspective, having seen that many people, that this is it. Yeah. And that's when you call up the director and you say, I think there may be something here. Yeah, and it, it was, it was true. She was so right. Okay, watch out, the FBI just showed up. 
<laughs> Get over there and take a picture with everybody. Come on. That car you sold, that's a transmission collateral. What can I say? Daddy, you're a crook. My big first memory was you and your mom, and we were at Art's Deli. It was when I, I asked you to do the part, and you guys were interested in doing it. Yeah. You remember that time? Yeah, we, well, I knew that we always wanted to do it. I loved the book so much. So this was a part that I really wanted to play. And I remember we were so thrilled when we got the script. So I didn't have to work so hard, but I didn't know that. <laughs> I didn't... When I think about the movie on its own, one of the messages there is you can make your own family. And it's funny because I did sort of feel like on the set of Matilda, we were very familial. You know, I did feel like Danny and Rio were like my aunt and uncle, you know. Mm. Kiami calls me your sister sometimes. If it feels like that, and I think that's a really important message. I think it's one of many important messages in the movie. I wanted to stay with Miss Honey. Miss Honey doesn't want you. Why would she want some snotty, disobedient kid? Because she's a spectacularly wonderful child, and I love her. What I wanted to do right now is one scene. Oh. Not moving. We don't have to go anywhere. <laughs> There are a few favorite scenes we have in the movie, and one of them is the first time she realizes that Matilda is gifted. We've been working on our two times tables. Would anyone like to demonstrate? <gasps> so, who knows the answer to two times two? Four. four. Oh, good job. Four times four. Sixteen. Sixteen, <laughs> 16 times two. Thirty-two. 32. 32. Oh my goodness. Is so good, one day you'll be able to multiply 13 times 379. 4,927. <laughs> Matilda, you know how to multiply big numbers? Wow. What was it like growing up as a uh, lavender? Oh, man, it's one of the best experiences of my life, honestly and truly. And, of course, you know, we had so much fun. And I love watching it pretty much every time it comes on. And I remember and it brings back amazing feelings, so. Because she was so young and the, when the movie came out, mm -hmm. did, did a lot of people recognize you as lavender? Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes I'll be walking and people say, you know, you look like that girl from Matilda. And I'm like, oh, okay, that's me. <laughs> that's cool. Oh, we yeah. had a great time. We did. I loved working with you. Aww, it was really a lot likewise. of fun. Likewise. David Newman did the music for the movie. That's right. OK, Lindsay Klingman and Michael Hoffaker, who edited our movie. They came an hour late, but they're here. <laughs> Come on in. Those scenes out in the yard, it was hot out there in front of Cruncham Hall. All the kids scrambling, running around. The one most scary, most this, most that, images that you saw, nine times out of 10, the riding crop <gasps> and the belt buckle. Because oh, <laughs> you whack it, baby. Wow. Julius Rotwinkle ate two M&Ms during her lesson. And she caught him? Of course. His number one question. Yes. Go ahead, go ahead. The number one question I always get is, was she that scary in oh, real life? Yes, yes. That's what they, that's I know. They say, and was I? Wow. Was I really? Or it's not. No, that's what I always say. She was so fine. Oh, yes, I know. And I, I give him money yeah. later. Yes. Yeah. 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 It's an extra 20 for that. <laughs> you know, fresh meat? My favorite yes. one. Yes. Fresh. fresh meat. <laughs> Meat. <laughs> Amanda Thrip. Yes, Miss Trunchbull. What are those things hanging down by your ears? What's what? Well, they're actually earrings, but they could be pigtails. You mean my pigtails? Yes, I mean you. Are you a pig, Amanda? No, Miss Trunchbull. Why are you wearing pigtails? I, 
Mommy thinks they're sweet. No, Mommy. It's a twit. I want those cut off before tomorrow, or I shall come but round. I don't. Did you say but? <sighs> I shall have to steal your earrings. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give you but. <laughs> Yeah, um, yes. except for like one part of it, like the flipping part didn't have extensions, but it was all mostly my hair. There wasn't like a wig or something. Okay. So, so what were you in, a harness? Like I had, there was a body cast that they put me in at one point. Yeah. Um, and then I was in a harness when I was hooked up to the crane. And then when I was going, <laughs> oh, yes, you <laughs> poor I, Were you scared? I loved it. Yeah. I, was, I was nine years old yeah. and I got to fly. Yeah. I don't know any other nine year old that got to fly. I remember though the way they actually had, I think, Danny go over the pointy fence on the rig as well to prove to her that he was willing to be impaled just like she would be. I think they were they got they rubber, were rubber ones. at the yeah. time. Yeah. We had this lovely man named Danny Andreco, who is the world's greatest sculptor of greens and gardening. And he built the flower bed that Amanda Thrift oh, landed in. Nice. And we buried a movable sled underneath right. the garden. And so Saturday. when she sat in it, we could move along and she could collect the flowers, but he had it arranged so he could do take two and have more flowers yes, ready yes, to go yes. and go. Wow. But that sequence was great. Yeah, it worked, great. Yeah, it worked great. out great. Yeah. Do you remember how we attached to the bottom of the table? Yes, I remember the way that we did the bottom of the table scene was I had a body cast. Uh, I had a body cast made from like my thigh to about my chest. And then we uh, put it on underneath a size up in the dress, I think. We, we went a size up in my dress and we put it on underneath it and then they put wire hooks and wire in it and then we, we stood the table up and then we wired me in. <laughs> that was a lot of fun. That was so much fun to film. <coughs> The dancing scene, do you remember the dancing scene we were supposed to? I was so nervous about dancing because I'm a terrible dancer. And so uh, I went to Danny and I said, you know, I'm a little nervous about this. And he said, okay, well, the rule is that day that everybody has to dance. And so everybody on the set danced. And, you know, my mom was dancing and Danny was dancing and everybody there was dancing as best they could. Being involved in the movie, which is one of the things that you said before, that you felt invested in it and also you felt that uh, you were involved in the creation of the, yeah, definitely. the character, and everybody here was. One day, Jane Rum, the customer, and you talked about the doll that you were, Yes, yeah, yes. Was... You said, OK, do you think that Matilda might have a doll that she made out of things that she'd found around the house? And I thought, yeah, OK. And so I went home. And I did this drawing. And I actually have the drawing right here because Jane, <laughs> <laughs> who worked in costumes, saved it. So let's see what it says. She it wears wears Mrs. Wormwood's, Wormwood's makeup. makeup. And she was wearing a little skirt. It. And she had one leg that was yeah. made out of jeans and one leg that where she had a little sock. And I remember doing the little <laughs> sewing, sewing a little lace on the sock, little sequin shoes. And I, I named her Wanda Zinnia Wild. <laughs> Wanda, Wanda Zinnia, Zinnia Wild. I figured, I figured, you know, there Matilda was, you know, she, she, she didn't have a good relationship with her mother. And this was actually maybe, maybe a, like a, almost a backhanded way <laughs> of getting back at her. This character of Miss Honey is uh, so beloved by so many people. Yeah, do you remember when I, I just, I'm thinking about when I met you. Do you remember when I came in and met you? And I thought of her as having allergies, and I had a napkin in here, and I had glasses. And I just, I just, I loved her so much. I felt her vulnerability. And Danny, I remember you wiping your eyes as I was doing the reading. You were like, you were like, and I knew you. You got me, I got you right away. Anyway, so that was my back then, and my now is, 
I now watch it through the eyes of my children. Because my kids see this idealized, beautiful, perfect, fawn of a thing that I just loved so much. One of the characters that everybody ask me about wherever I am all over the world. You're one of the first people they bring up because you're, you know, you're the caregiver in the movie. It's like it's really, really her relationship with Matilda. It's the idea that there's the, that's the light at the end of the tunnel and they find each other and it's so perfect. The last time we saw you, this was it, right. And he was very, very heavy. And the first time I saw him since then, I looked at him and I said, my God, he's, He's svelte, man. He lost all his weight. What did you, did you do something to? What was the story? Well, I stopped eating cake, so message to all you kids out there: don't eat too much cake. Bruce Bug Trotter. <gasps> Follow me, Bruce, little Brucey. Now, Brucey, I hear you like cake. Any particular kind of cake? No. I'm thinking of a particular kind of cake that belonged to me. Do you remember that cake? Well, it's hard for me to remember a specific cake. Will this refresh your memory? This is a very particularly delicious kind of cake because it was my cake. You slithered like a serpent into the school kitchen and ate my personal snack. No. You see this? This is a particularly delicious cake, particularly disruptious cake, and I want you to eat it. And what do you think of that, Brucey? It's actually quite good. Oh, quite good? Oh, I thought it was more than quite good. I thought it was delicious. Well, my mom's is better. <sighs> How can you be sure unless you eat all of it? You must have some more. <laughs> Cookie! Oh, well Baby. done, Cookie. Oh. <laughs> You, it's a whole other story. This is little Matilda. <laughs> this is like, let, let's do, do, what do you want a book for? What do you want a book for? To read. To that read. Why would <laughs> <laughs> well, you want to read when you get the television set right next to you? That's what I told my kids when I was teaching. You did? <laughs> yeah. Being in Matilda really, once I finally told them, kind of pushed them, oh, you were in Matilda? I want to read. I want to read the book. It was a good motivator for them. I love my kiddos. Yeah. Hi, kiddos. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Great. 
the camera crew and everybody else thanks you for being such incredible troopers. And, uh, and uh, th thank you all. Thanks for coming. It was really cool working with you and uh, Mara and everybody in the movie and Pam Ferris. It was truly fun. It was a lot of fun. Like I always say, Cheers is like a camp, but this was like camp too. I don't think anyone didn't have a good time. A blast. Yeah. On the right, movie. all the way up to today, which is everybody's really having a good time today. So we'll have to get together yeah. again, see the movie again someday. Yeah.